Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rubber City Throwdown, the official voices for Honor Fighting Championship. Uh, God, dude, it's been a couple weeks, man. Took a couple weeks off since the last show at the Chaparral's in Akron. Uh, Honor Fighting Championship Five on June thirtieth. Fight hell fest. Of a, yeah, Fight Fest. That was a hell of a card. We decided to take a couple weeks off because the next event isn't until August eighteenth. We didn't want to uh, basically didn't want to talk about the same event, uh, say, the same fights over and over and over again. And at the time, there's only like a few fights on the card. Um, now that we're around the ten fight mark, I think right. we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on for Honor Fighting Championships six up at the nautica i think they're trying to go with the uh fight night nautica fight night nautica i think they're gonna try to go with that i'm not i'm not exactly sure if they're actually gonna uh, make a stick but i have heard talk that they're gonna try to start naming some of these bigger shows and uh try to get fight night nautica i like that it's got a good ring to it yeah it does i mean it's almost kind of rhymes fight night nautica fight night, fight nautica. night nautica i can see that on like a uh, like a commercial or something you see jeremy and his son or something and all of a sudden you see fight night nautica nautica not it would be <laughs> ladies and gentlemen get down here to fight night nautica <laughs> i could see this becoming something that of a of a trend and possibly something of like a uh an annual um reoccurrence for honor fighting championship i think that's going to be something big if they can continue yeah. to do this i like uh i was talking with uh brian clark about this and basically what we were trying uh well not we what uh he was he was trying to get done what he wanted to do was kind of do the um like the 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 fight night nautica one Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because right now they've got Honor 1, Honor 2, and they're just numbering every show. Um, but some of the bigger venues, like if they could pull like the Canton Civic Center, um, the, the Nautica Pavilion, you know, start naming those specific events, the big fights. So instead of calling this Honor Fighting Championship 6, call it Fight Night Nautica right. 1. You know, and then, uh, you know, maybe... Maybe at the beginning of every year, you know, when they do their, uh, you know, say they do the chaparrales mm -hmm. in like January or February, you know, uh, you know, do their Operation Shockwave 2. You know what I'm saying? Instead of oh, naming instead of, instead every of individual. Yeah, reusing, the, recycle the same name. So you're not coming up with new friggin' names every single month show recycle the names but name the sh name the events number the events instead of number the 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 shows it's, like i said instead of doing honor one i didn't honor two honor three um operation shockwave you know honor fighting sh championship operation shockwave two right you know honor fighting championship fight night nautica one right. two three etc so uh it's got a little it's got a good rank to it i'm, I'm sure there's a lot of details that they're going to want to work out and i would kind of be curious to see if they make that happen um i would be curious i mean i i'm uh, I would like that. I wouldn't mind seeing a, a Fight Night Nautica 1, a Fight Night Nautica 2, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chaos at the Theater, Civic Theater. I don't know, man. Something crazy. I don't know. What, what's a good name if they Let's had see, the... Let's see, Canton uh, Civic Theater. Where is it? Where, uh, Chaos there. at the Civic. Civic. Canton... I don't know, man. Alliteration. Canton son. Cannon Rumble. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I did. Cannon was stupid. No, um, I don't know. There's... I'm sure I, that's why we're not in charge of making names. Yeah, that's pretty why, much. That's why we're not we're not we're not in charge of coming we up. We came names. up with one good one. <laughs> that <laughs> one, was it. And that one, 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 one was even difficult. Yeah, rubber city throwdown. That was <laughs> that was. Fun. I don't even remember some of the names that we were kind of messing around. I with. think it was like rubber city, rubber city battle, or I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't even I remember. I don't even remember some of the. Uh, I think one of them wasn't even rubber city. It wasn't even associated with rubber city. I don't even remember. Uh, Fists of Fury or something. Like that. I yeah, Fists of Fury. <laughs> no, can't. That's trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, August eighteenth, man. This is. We are going to have one of the most exhilarating days that I will ever be able to see in my life, probably. For what names are already starting to pop up on this card, man? I, these fighters are amazing. Yeah. I mean, every single one of them brings something different to to the cage, and I can't wait to see it. Well, I like I like it because, I mean, this is uh, it is quickly shaping up to be show of the year, and 
with some of the names that they're starting to pull, like um, like Alexa and Cody Stevens is now a main event. Yeah. Uh, or sorry, co-main event. Um, they've got uh, fighters like like Nick Brashear, who's making his professional debut. Dude, that guy has been Caleb waiting Raymond. for a while. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they've got Logan Urban, who's mm-hmm. coming in here, and he's fighting a Zach Davis. You got uh, Yohi uh, uh, Rojas coming in. We got uh, Tim Hughes against William Ferguson, Braden Liggett, Cameron McIntyre. You got all corners of of Northeast Ohio yeah. coming together to, to fight on this card. You've got guys who you saw, only saw them fight for this organiza- organization, now fighting for, for this organization just for the significance of Nautica. the venue. Yeah, Nautica. The Nautica Pavilion, man. And um, that's why you get a lot of these these uh, the you know the NAAFS crew that are starting to come out of the woodwork now and going hey what that you know because back, that was like not said, that was the NAAFS yeah, back then, bread was, and butter back fight then. night in the flats and and you know now that the uh, NAFS is no longer a thing right and honor stepping in and going I think we can fill this let's do it they've got the resources now they're getting the fight card together um, like I said this this event can fail. You know, don't get me wrong. It, it it takes more than just having a good fight card to make an event succeed. And this is Norm playing both sides here. <laughs> no, I'm, both just sides. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. This event, this event can fail. You're, you're and I'll right. give you an example of of an issue that they've already run into. Um, guess who's not recording this event? Mike really? Moran. He's already been booked. They didn't book this guy in time. Um, so, so now they have to figure out who's recording. Is it going to be live? You know, mm. it, it's, it's this event can fail. There so is they have plenty of time. TV is not a thing right now. I don't know. I have no idea. It may be a thing. I don't know. I mean, there are people out there that do what Mike Moran does. They just cost a little bit more money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, that sucks, man. Yeah. Two like events. I said, wow. There there is. Um, I say he's already pre booked. Right. No, the guy this, is busy. This event can fail. They have plenty of time to figure this shit out, though. You know, yeah, we got saying? about what four weeks? Got, oh yeah, four weeks, a little bit. Yeah, just under four weeks. They got plenty of time. Hell, this the the fight card is not even done yet. You know, they got plenty of time. You got a lot of guys that are trying to get on this fight card. So, I mean, Scott Corbin, matchmaker of the year, voted by uh, Bluegrass MMA. He he already proven himself more than what what we have ever seen when he did the card for the all amateur card last uh, at Fight Fest. Right. You know, it, it I could only I could only hope that he goes above and beyond of this card. Well, Scott has a very big, a very large database of fighters, a large network of fighters to begin with because he's been doing this for um a couple years now. And um not to mention it also helps that uh, you when you have fighters that come out of the woodwork and go, hey, I want to fight on this card. It makes it a little bit easier, you know. This is a big card. This is a big event, and um, hell, the celebrity status alone. I think you got a couple guys from the Cleveland Browns that are supposed to show up here. I'm I'm hoping that we might get a, an appearance from uh, Stipe Miocic and, Je- and Jessica I. I Yusuf mean, we've Evans. got we've already got a for sure uh, strong style. Um, matchup right now we got two of them we got two of them yeah, now? We got Aleska, Aleska oh yeah let's go come on and, and then uh cody Fear. stevens no cody stevens is a strong style fighter i mean remember he has his own gym up in in mansfield okay. but he's he trains uh at strong style and he competes under the strong style name so um i really i'm sure there's going to be more strong style fighters that are going to be coming up and and trying to fight on this card as well we've got griffin roll fighters that are yep. going to be coming up and fighting on this show we've got guys from victory you know we, we've we've got a we got a lot of guys. We got a lot of guys. Hell, um, we got we got we got Erie PA. We got three elements that are coming in with William Ferguson, who's fighting, you know, uh, Tim Hughes for the uh, the lightweight title. Right. You know, we've got uh, uh, Yohi and Alex uh, J- Alex Johnson, by the way, who's fighting for the featherweight title. We've got Lucas Mass, who we just saw fight, Braden, fighting Braden Leggett, who we last saw fight in January when he fought KO Butler, right. fighting for the welterweight title. And uh, I know some people, um, you may have the same questions that I had. You know, why are we fighting again for, why are two different fighters fighting for a uh, welterweight title when Michael Edo just beat Kyle Booth on June 30th? We're for the also, 
we're, we're, we're also not going to dive too, too much into that, though. That I don't know if that's updated, though. Is that a true thing or not? Because that's who I was talking about. Yeah, I mean, we got said there. There's a lot of names. There's a, there's a lot of names that are that are coming on uh, that are, haven't yet been released for um, MMA Underground, and uh, this is the because uh, that is would the make that would make this three is fighter ticks, right? Yeah, that would make three of them in this. If that's true, I don't want to say any names because if it's not true, then I don't know. You're talking about like Kobe Fair and and Matt Ingram. Yeah, Kobe Fair uh, is with Strong Style. Right. Yeah. And then Brogan Andres is coming in. Uh, Andres, uh, Christopher Schmeg. I I did I did remember this fight getting announced. Um, I just didn't want to bring anything up, just in case. I said I. There's like I said, this is on FighterTakes.com. And uh, we also get information from MMA Underground, which is obviously not as updated. I also have, like, I get the Facebook uh, mm-hmm. feeds from Scott Corbin. Right. So whenever a fight is announced officially, it gets put on there. Um, I'm usually informed with that. And uh, this is this is most likely um, updated. Um, again, some uh, events are going to be off um some events are going to get canceled some fighters are going to drop out so we'll have to keep our eye on that and that's why you know from here on out we're going to be recording every week because we're four weeks out right um last uh back in may you know we had two months between events and right. we were just basically trying to fill time and i didn't want to do that this time so now we'll now that we're four weeks out it's the we're going to be updating everybody especially our viewers um, on every fight, but yeah, you know, Cameron McIntosh and Dom Johns, which is going to be a yeah, crazy great fight. fight, man. Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Ofek, we just saw him fight. He's fighting Drew Dixon. Mm-hmm. Um, Drew Dixon is four and one, and then Jeff Jeffrey Ofek uh, out of Griffin Raw is four and two. And then uh, then yeah, the Lucas Mass and Braden Liggett, and then Tim Hughes and Will Ferg. Hopefully, William Ferguson can stay healthy because um, I'd really like to see that fight because I think stylistically. Tim Hughes and, and Will Fur go together very well. Yes, Both they do. guys are really good on the ground yep. with moderate striking. So I think it's gonna be a, a real chess match, especially when it goes to the ground. And I and I say when it goes and not if when uh, yeah, like because both, both of them are really strong the with their jujitsu and that's that's one of the biggest things that we can always guarantee that it's going to be a great fight. Yeah. And I mean like Alex Johnston is six and two and he's going up against Yohi Rojas, man. Yohi's seven and oh. This mm-hmm. dude is an animal, man. I cannot wait to see the, this fight too, man. And I, we we covered Alex right. Johnson back in 2017 when he fought with the uh, at the RFO. Right. So it's it's gonna be an interesting fight. And then like we got an opportunity to meet uh, Logan Urban. Yeah. Uh, out of out of uh, I'm pretty sure he was with Griffin Roll as well. Um, he's fighting a Zach Davis. Uh, Logan Irwin is one and zero. Zach Davis is zero and one. And then yeah, we finally get to see the pro debut of Nick Brashear, who was uh, seven and zero, eight and zero. I think it was eight and zero as, an, no amateur. as an amateur. He held like three titles, fighting uh, new up and comer Caleb Raymond. Which the most uh, recent title was for Honor Fighting Championship at Super yeah. Heavyweight. And then Caleb Raymond, who we saw fight at uh, reaching the summit, who put on a very impressive performance against Eddie Faison. Yes. Um, uh, strong guy, big guy. So, but Nick Brashear, also the vanilla gorilla, baby, he's, yeah, he's a big guy. dude as well. I'm really, really curious to see how. He's about maybe, what, four inches taller than me? Somewhere <laughs> he's around there? He's a big dude, man. He's a big, he's guy. A big guy. And his frame is, like, is just solid. And then, like, with Aleska uh, Kamar, man, like, out of strong style, 3-0, and oh, he's fighting a, uh, a Marvin Skipper who's 3-1, and one, so they just got to keep funneling Aleska like top-quality fighters, man. Right. This dude's on his way. If Aleska wins this fight, man, I, I honestly could see him on a, a UFC contender series. Um, you know, you never know. There might be people at this event. There's probably going there, to there be. Might, there, so there, a few there, scouts here yeah, and there. Yeah, there might be some scouts. There might be some scouts at this event. I mean... It would be stupid for him not to be there. It's a big event. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you have right. people um, at an event of this caliber? Um, I mean, especially you know? when you have big celebrities coming. 
you've got a huge traffic area there, man. I mean, we'll be lucky to be able to put one foot out of our tent. By the way, we're going to have a canopy. <laughs> so come on by, take a check at us, and, uh, you know, grab a photo, whatnot. I know we're so famous. Um, you know, we're going to be able to step foot out and probably not be able to throw a stone far enough and not hit something or someone that isn't of some kind of, stand, uh, you know, icon somewhere. Yeah, like, there's, there's definitely going to be going to I wouldn't be surprised if we show. see uh, Shane French up there. <laughs> it's, it's a possibility. I mean, I'll be looking out for that Tesla. Yeah, I mean, we got so many good fights on this card right now already. I mean, hell, just like Brogan and Andres, we unfortunately weren't able to see his fight on June 30th because his opponent had a burn on his leg. Yeah. Um, and the doctor had refused to clear him. So hopefully now we get to see uh, he's fighting a guy who's making his debut with Christopher uh, Schmick, Schmack. Shesnick. I think it's Shesnick. Is that Shemek. it? I don't fucking know. We have a horrible, horrible following with this. <laughs> we 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 apologize for saying your name wrong. You know what? We should probably even put that. I don't even apologize. We should probably put that as a thing. What you like my phone that much? Oh, I wanted to see the. I wanted to see the remainder of the card. And you see, I don't do my research. <laughs> ah, yeah, with Tristan Constant uh, fighting Michael Webb. Um, Michael Webb was. The guy who got knocked out by Tyron Reed in eight seconds, um, who was training with Justin Meese. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and then, Is it Meese or Meese? Meese. Meese? Yes, okay. Meese. Um, Tristan Constant. We know Tristan. We've yeah. interviewed Tristan multiple times. We even uh, had him on the podcast. Um, yeah, we did. On uh, Discord. It was a Discord or Skype at the time. I think it was. No, he did. He has. It was Skype. We, had it a, was we did a Skype, Skype interview with Tristan. And Tristan, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing him back in the cage. He's a very talented fighter. And Michael Webb, judging uh, from what we've seen, all eight seconds of his fight footage, we need, I mean, we need to see more. But this guy needs to step his training up. Yeah. Um, last time I we had talked to him, Michael Webb was training in a garage. Um, he, needs, he needs to do more. And, and I believe you said something about, you know, possibly maybe him opening up his horizons a little bit more and maybe going with a camp. Yeah, I mean... Like I said, I always have a soft spot for um, independent fighters because I was an independent fighter for so long. But as an independent fighter, I, you do, you know, I know that you need a camp. Right. You know, that's where you're gonna get. If you're if you're just trying to do this sport just to do it, um, then yeah, train independent all you want to, man. If you're just competing for the sake of competition. Ah, train by yourself. But if this, you have to sit down and ask yourself, really ask yourself, if this is something that you want to pursue as a career, right? get with a camp. I'm not saying go to strong style and just try to immediately train with the best. And I'm not even saying that strong style is the best. They just have a lot of the best fighters uh, in Northeast Ohio, depending on the weight class. But... <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not going to say they have all the, their their entire <laughs> camp, their gym is just loaded up with every you know best fighter in, in Northeast Ohio, but they right. definitely have a lot of top quality fighters. I'm not saying you have to go to Strong Style. There are plenty of gyms out there that you can go to and train with top quality. Oh, yeah, definitely. You go to Evolve, you go to Victory. There's a ton. You go to hell. You go to Aries. Aries, how you want to you want to learn yeah. to wrestle? Go to Aries, man. Right. Dave Graff is going to help you. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they have they have they have a ton of, of uh, top quality fighters all over Northeast Ohio. But the point is, you don't have to be Northeast Ohio. But uh, the point is, get with a camp. Right. If you want to take this sport seriously and you want to kind of go to the next level, mm -hmm. you know, if you're losing. And you're not with a good camp, or you're not you're not with a camp at all. That probably is your 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 training mistake. regimen. It's got needs nothing to, be... to do with you as a fighter. No, it's got everything to do with your training. Yeah, training uh, regimen needs to be yes. changed somewhere. Exactly, you need exactly. to get with a quality, uh, a decent quality gym, and you know, and and if you don't know where to go, ask somebody. You know, somebody can point you in the right direction. There's plenty you know. of there's plenty of uh, trainers that are at every fight, man. And we've seen it multiple times where they see an independent come in and they go, hey, we see where it went wrong. Come out, train with me, 
and and this is what we need to do. This is what you need yeah. to work on. You know, it's not a hostile environment. And that's what a lot of fighters find it to be, is that when you get into a camp, it's going to become a hostile environment for you because now you're going to be uh, with all of the, the uh, how should I put it, rivalries of the different camps. You want to cross-train, cross-train. Go. Do it. Right. You know, it, nobody's well, A lot old. of gyms nowadays, uh, they, they do, a lot of gyms now do now what they, they never did back then is uh, fighter contracts, and which I... I completely disagree with i get it as a business standpoint but i really i disagree with a gym trying to basically own a fighter and then prohibit them from going and gym hopping and trying to get the best experience for what for them you know especially when you have a good fighter that comes along and then they go hey i want to train with you guys for a month and they go oh you got to sign this contract for a year and it's like whoa no never mind right. you know a I mean, lot of gyms don't do that. I mean, but. who? what fighter, it was a recent fighter, went out to Arizona or somewhere and trained for a little while and came back. I know that there's a lot of fighters out there that do that. God, I know you're, t I, I, I don't remember who it was. I don't remember who it was. It was on this recent card too. Yeah. Yeah, they came out and they, they had gone to, uh, was it Arizona or New Mexico? I, I, I could They go to Jackson and they trained with Jackson, right? Uh, yeah. And yeah, they yeah, went yeah. out and they trained with Jackson. I don't remember who. Was it Jeffrey Ofek? It wasn't. It wasn't Ofek. No, it wasn't. God Ofec. damn it! I don't remember who it was. I I vaguely remember. I hear. I heard about it. I didn't actually. I don't think I actually talked to the person. They told me that's what they did. I think you interviewed them. I'd have to go back and look at the interviews and see if it was actually disclosed in, in, in a, one of the pre or post fight interviews. But yeah, no, yeah, you you get a guy who want to um who will travel across the country. I mean, hell, uh, Victory uh, Drew Schottenheimer. They went and trained in uh, yeah. the Team Quest. Yeah. And that was when Drew ended up taking a fight right. while he was supposed to be on vacation, you know, training with these guys. But, yeah, it's absolutely um, – I would love to do that one day down the road is train. I mean, you see a lot of UFC people. vets right now that will go out of country, out of state, you know, just to go train with somebody that they oh, don't yeah, really tons know. tons of people when they got a camp coming up. Yeah. Tito Ortiz used to do that all the time. they would go to Big Bear yeah. and uh, high-altitude train out there, and, and he would do that a lot. Um yeah, it's yeah, get your mind ready too. It's not unheard of to go to another camp and do a camp somewhere else. Like um, TJ Dillashaw was with uh, Team Alpha Male with Arya Faber, but he would frequently go to like Denver to train where his striking coach was at to train with them, and that actually became an issue. And that's why the that's where the rivalry of um, T.J. Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt mm -hmm. and Araya Faber and Team Alpha Male, Male became an it, it became a thing. It became this big back and forth because T.J. was bouncing between camps. A lot of guys don't like that. Right. Say nowadays, it's kind of frowned upon if you're going to train with these guys and then you turn around and go train with these guys. You know, um, do they find it a conflict of interest or do they find it to be some more something more of you know, well, you're training with somebody else, so why should I train you? I don't know. Honestly, I think it's a mixture between uh, gym rivalry and gym owners looking at fighters as meal tickets. You know, okay. I think that's you, you look at a guy who goes, this guy has a future in the sport. I want to manage him. I want him representing my gym. And then they try to go to another gym and you go, hey, what the fuck? You're not going to represent their gym. You're going to you're supposed to be here with us. And then. It causes a dispute, it causes an issue, and then you know nine times out of the ten, when you do that, you're gonna lose the fighter to the right. other gym, because nobody wants to get yelled at, and told, you know, hey, you have to train here, you have to represent us. You know, uh, well, fighting my... is an independent sport, so um, you know, right? Except it's it's an, it's an it's an independent sport, man. You, your coach isn't going into the cage with you; he's not gonna get punched in the face with you. You know, right. just there to manage you and kind of lead, you know, get you ready for that moment. But ultimately, when it's all said and done, you're the one getting in the cage and putting your life on the line, and you got to win that match. So. Right. Well, let's move on a little bit. Let's see. Uh, let's see about a couple of these title fights, man. No, uh, you know, Yohi Ro uh, Rojas and, and Alex Johnson. Like I said, we're not going to touch too much into a lot of these fights. We're just giving but you the names and the weight class. This is going to be a featherweight battle. And um, though we haven't actually... We actually haven't seen Yohi fight. We haven't... Well, we've seen him. We haven't mm -hmm. covered him. Um, we have covered Alex Johnson, though. Yes. And uh, 
Alex Johnson actually had when we had a fight in uh, with Matt Trukovich's RFO, I believe. Unless I'm getting, unless there's another Alex Johnson or another Alex Johnston, because it's there's Alex Johnson, and Alex Johnston, but I'm pretty sure this is the cat that fought um, Jamar Moore. Jamar Moore. Jamar. Oh, Jamar. It's Jamar, and um. Pretty oh, sure. I'm thinking of. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. But uh, let's see here. I'm almost positive that this is the guy. My laptop's being super slow right now. But uh, wow, it's going so slow that it can't even recognize the scroll up <laughs> function. Yeah. Yep. It is. He, he fought Jamar at uh, Big Guns 23. And that would have been in uh, yeah May 24th of 2017. It would have been our second show, second or third show that we did. And um, he ended up beating uh, JMR by decision. And that was for the RFO. Um, I think it was lightweight. I think it was a lightweight title. Um, he also beat uh, fighters like Darnell Truitt. And he knocked Darnell on 27 seconds. Really? Um, yeah. And, and I said, and everyone... That was a while ago. He is man. coming off a loss, though. He he has fought as recent as May of this year. He uh, fought for Pinnacle. He uh, fought Fatty Schumann, and uh, or f it's F A D I Fatty Fatty. I don't want to say Fatty because uh, I'm done. I'm pretty sure I'm it's Fatty. Is it? It's... What is it? Fatty or Fatty Schumann? <laughs> fatty baby, Fatty <laughs> Schumann. <laughs> but he lost the decision. <laughs> He also he also won the. That's almost as bad as us doing the. <laughs> <laughs> Fatty human. We found out Son that one of, of one of the people. <laughs> by the way, it's not it's not <laughs> it's not Juan. It's Juan. It's it's it's. It's Juwan. Juwan. <laughs> but he won. Uh, he uh, Alex said he's he has won two titles, amateur titles already. Um, with two different organizations. He won with uh, the RFO, the other one with Iron Tiger, and now he's fighting for the honor title. Right. So and he's, a, he's six and two, and he's fighting an undefeated Yohi Rojas. So definitely looking forward to this fight. Now, are we positive that it's Rojas this time? Yes. Okay. Not Rajas. 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 But, uh, and then we've got the Wilferg and Tim Hughes lightweight title fight which Wilford was supposed to originally fight Michael Ado. Correct. Wilford got hurt. Michael Ado jumped up to welterweight to fight Kyle Booth. Yes. Um so now Tim Hughes after winning his last fight against a formidable opponent with Eric Posen. Yes. Uh is now going to be fighting hopefully a healthy William Ferguson out of Erie, Pennsylvania with three elements. Correct. And then uh now there was speculation that Tim wanted to do a uh, a title match. Whatever happened to that? What do you mean? Tim Hughes was thinking about doing a uh, a title, wanting a title, and he was going to go after uh, next in his class. Well, he's fighting for a title, but this fight. This is the lightweight title fight. I'm an idiot. But he's not going up a weight class. So he's staying at 155. That's what I was going after. I wasn't going after that. <laughs> Never mind. I was an idiot. I got but, it mixed up. I was thinking of going up a weight class from lightweight to middleweight. No, no. He uh, Though he has fights at welterweight, I think he has found his home at yeah. 55. So he will take on William Ferguson at the lightweight division for honor fighting championship uh title and then we have lucas mass who's coming off of a victory against a tough casey turnbull and he is fighting Braden liggett who is coming off a victory from ko butler right and this is a lot of people this fight man this is okay so Braden, this is uh uh out of t county is a, is a boxer. His last fight against KO, KO couldn't close the gap. Uh, Brayden uh, used his reach, used his length, used his boxing ability, and basically won the fight. And then with uh, Lucas Mass, is a great jujitsu guy. Yeah. You know, uh, is his striking 
on par with Braden Liggett. I'm going to I'm going to say no only because Braden primarily trains in uh boxing. That would be like me. It's the same thing. Do I think Braden Liggett's ground game is as good as Lucas's? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. Lucas Mass is a good jujitsu guy. Right. I don't think Lucas is much of a wrestler. We're like KO. Uh he had trained when he was with Aries. He had did mm-hmm. a lot of wrestling as well. But I think a lot of people are looking at this fight like it's going to be a war. I don't think so. I I don't think that this fight, I I think people on the outside, man, looking in, I don't think that, I don't think this is going to be a war. But it could, it could be a war. But you have to understand, like, Brayden, like, it's a tall, lanky dude where Lucas isn't lanky. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's tall. He's got some height on him. But, like, this isn't Casey Turnbull. Right. That Lucas is fighting. This is Braden Leggett now. You know, we expected that that fight. Uh, then Casey again, he could Lucas, change his game up. Is that Casey and Lucas? That fight that was the, that was a hell of a fight, right? Because of of the fighting style. Um, Braden's fighting style isn't Casey Turnbull's. You know what I'm saying? Which is this the is reason why people. Which is the reason why people are saying it's going to be a war is because of the two different styles, but. Well, I think like if you had both fighters that were on equal playing field, at least on the striking level, then yeah, maybe. I just don't think that these fighters are on an on a on a, a level playing field when it comes to the striking. Just like they're not on a level playing field when it right. comes to the jujitsu. I think uh, this. So do fight... you think? Uh, perfect example, Tim Hughes. Okay. Okay. Uh, he he was trying something different, and it then turned from, oh shit to immediately going to what is at home yeah okay now, so do you think the only the only thing is is um like do i do i think that that lucas is going to get his ass kicked on the stand up and then have to go to the ground no i'm not saying that at all that's what, what I'm, I'm saying say, yeah what i'm saying is if that does happen where he's he's obviously losing the stand up and he needs to take the, the fight to the ground he has to be able to do what ko couldn't get him get to it, the ground right. get he him has in. to close the gap and Braden's very good at at using his reach and his length to his advantage. So I think Lucas I have a, really got to get inside that bubble, and he, right. he really has. To, that's what he has. He has to get inside Braden's bubble, and he has to really push Braden and test Braden's ground game. And you know what right. I'm saying? That's what he he really has to test that. And I think I just have a, a hard time wording things right, and, and instead of giving examples, but I on it. Obviously, it's going to go to the ground. I, I, if he can get it in, yeah, we th- we thought that the KO fight was gonna go to the ground. I mean, I was commentating that fight, and I I said hands down, I was like, KO's game plan should be simple. Right. Get inside Braden's bubble, press him up against the cage, and and unload some dirty boxing. Maybe take him to the ground. Utilize the uh, the wrestling. See where Leg Leggett's wrestling is. You know, right, it, it, right. what's his ground game like? And then maybe do some ground up. That should have been the game plan. And it wasn't because KO, uh, KO couldn't close the gap. Right, right, right. I mean, and, and you, if you watch that fight, KO was chasing him. Right. I mean, he was chasing him all over the all damn over. cage, man, yeah. trying, trying to get inside. Uh, Lucas has to do what KO couldn't, and that's close the gap, get in his bubble, press him, get him to the ground. Right. You know and what I'm saying? And then take it home. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not in Lucas's gym training. I'm a. I'm not training him. That's Jose. Jose is in charge yes. of that. I'm not training him. I'm not training with him. I'm not ver- like visually seeing on any of that. So I don't know. Mm. And also, we also taking into consideration that Braden Liggett, um, he was scheduled to fight back in like April. He it ended up not fighting. It kind of went off the map a little bit. We don't know if he was sick. We don't know if he was injured. We don't know what's going on with Braden. All we know is now that he's fighting, he's competing, and now it's for a title. And uh, you know, we'll this, find out in know, the next couple of weeks. Whether this is going to be a good fight, but a lot of people who are saying that this is going to be a war, I don't. I think you have to look at the, the greater picture, the bigger picture. Right. Uh, maybe you're seeing something that I'm not, and vice versa. So, uh, but yeah, guys, definitely, definitely start getting your tickets now. Um, is this going to be a sellout crowd? Uh, no, the venue's too big. Um, this venue holds like. 5,000 plus people. That's true. Um, I I don't think that this event is going to sell out. 
Um, is it going to be a very, very popular event? Is there going to be a lot of people there? Absolutely. But yes, get your tickets now. Um, <laughs> they're not going to just be selling standing room. Like I fought at this pavilion. Ooh, no, so I know that. I, I know I, that. But there's stadium seating. There's, you know, but with the traffic that might be there, we're not going to guarantee it, but the NAAFS couldn't sell out the nautica with steep a fighting on that damn card they're not the, the first time mm-hmm. that honor is putting this show on let's be yeah. real here yeah. you want to yeah. be realistic about this i'm a very i'm a realist i'm a very I'm logical and i'm a very realistic person you are probably not going to sell no. this out but, but are we going to get close <laughs> i don't i don't know I i'm don't thinking know. half i'm thinking half that'd be nice that would, I'm that would thinking. Be a I'm thinking somewhere around a healthy two two thousand. It'd would be, be nice. nice. It'd be nice. I mean, hell, they could probably hit three three point five. It's possible. Are they gonna? Sell, what the point I'm trying to make is is that are they gonna sell out? Most likely not. But you should definitely get your ticket. Yes. Because they are. You know, this this is definitely a fight that um this is like I isn't said, there going to be early, I don't. I don't know. This is this is a, a fight what of the. It? What is it? Let me see. Uh, an event of the year contender already. There's probably no right now. There is no promotion in Ohio that can compete with Honor um, right now. And trust me, I don't care who you are. You could. There are there are organizations that try to start up that have failed. Uh, no, in the no last six months. You know, but right now there's no organization that can hold a candle. No. To, honor right now maybe no. there will be right now there is not no actively going not we might see somebody pop up here and there next year but it's it's getting too far into it into the season yeah i mean there's no way but yeah. we do have some general admission information general admission still going to be 30 dollars uh, we're going to be doing, no, uh, I thought that I, I even heard that he was, he might've even, he was going to drop it to 25. Uh, no, he was talking about $25 tickets. If you bought them at uh fight fest. Oh, okay. That's what you heard. He was doing a, you know, you guys can kind get your like pre-order. A, now yeah. you get your $25 tickets right now. It's going to be the cheapest. It's a $5 knockoff. You couldn't beat it. Uh, but right now general admission for the Nautica show is going to be $30. Uh, there are table seats in row two. There's table seats in row one. Uh, those ones you're looking at row two is $65. Table seats in row one, you're looking at $75. Now, these are the 10, 10 seated tables in row one and two. Uh, for row two, you're looking at $650 for 10 seats. Uh, 10 seats in uh, tables row one, you're looking at about $750. Those are package deals. Uh, you also have still have the Circle of Honor and the Ring of Honor. Uh, Circle of Honor is going to be ninety-five dollars a seat. I wonder if they're still giving out free beer. I think he, I don't know if he's still. Just doing wait. That. Just hold on. Getting into this. Hold on. So you're looking at Circle of Honor. All right. You're going to be looking into. Uh, I believe he did say. Jeremy, if you want to comment on this, this is completely up to you. Uh, Circle of Honor and Ring of Honor are two totally different guys. Circle of Honor is going to be $95 a seat. The Ring of Honor is $125 a seat. I believe the Ring of Honor is going to be the one with the free beer. And that's why I I didn't know if he was uh, still planning on doing that. But, yeah, at the last last event, the Ring of Honor, you Hundred and hundred and twenty, hundred twenty five bucks, but you got free drinks. Yes, and so, I believe and it was I, like, I mean, you were the ring of honor. I mean, you could, you could smell the blood. I mean, you're literally like a foot away from where the commentators and the judges right. are at. Man, you're right. Now there, he so. may change that. This could be different because of the fact that they now have stage tables as well. That is also a ten seat package deal. And it's, you're looking that's at that's definitely like, that's definitely worth it. Man, stage tables are really nice. It's, you're looking at one thousand five hundred dollars for the for that ten seats. Right. So that might be the switch. He may he may yeah, have it to I wear. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what we're you're looking at prices. You're, you're and, definitely and, gonna want some uh, those those stage seats, man, because like, uh, and if they do it the way that uh, if, uh, that I remember is like the fighter comes through the stage, like they, right. they their entrance is the stage, and then they come down, uh, and then you walk into the so so your stage come down come down down the stairs into the fucking 
cage. I mean, right. it's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful setup if they do it right. So that's so. what we've got going on right now. As everything goes on, it looks like everything's still doing great. Um, always check your fighter. Always go after a fighter. Support your fighter. Yeah, support your fighter. Support your, support local MMA and support your local fighter. If you're going to go uh, to this event, make sure you hit up fightertakes.com. Uh, click on the Honor Fighting Championship six tag. Select a fighter. Doesn't even have to be your favorite fighter. You don't know any of it. Just pick a fighter, a, fam a familiar face, a familiar name. Support your local fighter. Um, some of these guys are amateurs. They don't get paid to do what they're about to go out there and do for you, a spectator, a fan, as entertainment. You know, go ahead and support your local fighter. If you really want to make a there. fighter's day, pick a debut fighter. Yeah, pick an amateur debut fighter and uh, contact them on social media, man. Like their fan page and contact them once they have ticket uh, tickets available. Get a hold of them, buy it directly from them. Or like I said, go to uh, fighterticks.com and uh, buy our ticket from there. And this is definitely a show, uh, like I said, early contender for a show of the year. And uh, it is going to be in Cleveland at the Jacobs Pavilion at Nautica. And that's located at 2014 Sycamore Street, Cleveland, Ohio, guys. And until next time. Later.